So then we basically went from this standard Markov chains where we are conditioned upon a particular index and ask whether the future from this time onwards is going to be independent of past. Now when we just instead of asking for a deterministic time when we move to a random time, this is a slight technicality but that technicality is important to handle because most of the times we will be facing such cases. For example, in the example I gave, you are not always going to like if you go to a stock broker and if you are interested in stock trading, you will not uh, just say that uh, you sell my shares on 100th day. You will tell him to sh sh uh, sell your shares when its value is above certain number, right. So, then only you feel that it is profitable for you. So, that is why we have to worry about conditioning on a random time, okay. And also like in the aircraft example I gave you, so you want to always keep track of what is your fuel level or whatever some other parameter and you want to say that okay, if this parameter exceeds something, you see how what, what things happen in the future, okay. So that is why it is important to handle this technicality. And uh, to understand this, we have to kind of uh, slightly introduce some notions called we want to bring in something called strong Markov property. Sn, oh, sorry, Jn. So, now what we want is we are going to define 
a Markov chain to satisfy a strong Markov property with respect to random time t. So, the strong Markov property is defined with respect to some random time. If this condition holds, what is this condition? Till random time t, you give all the state of my Markov chain, then ask the question from that time onwards, if you go S1 steps ahead, S2 steps ahead and S3, Sn steps ahead, that distribution is going to be equal to this probability, where this probability says that, no. Okay. Yeah, that is still correct. So, this says that you can as if now you can think of your Markov chain starting from this time and then going to in the next S1 states to state J1 and further in, in state uh, in time S2 to J2 like that. Xt? No. So, that is now become your starting point that will become your starting point. Yeah. Whatever that xt, right, that time where you took i, that you will now take it as your origin and from there you start going in the next s1 step you take j2 and in s2 uh, you take uh, j2. So, what it basically Markov prop this uh, strong Markov property is telling that if you go into condition till a random time then the future you can think of as if your origin is at that point and from there you are looking at the same amount of future ahead. So, what you did here till x t you looked into then the future you looked into further s 1 rounds in the future and then another s 2 rounds in the future right. So, here it is just saying that then you can imagine that the process has started right from there, then look jumping to J1 in the S1 steps ahead in the future. So, like that basically what it is telling is if, if strong Markov property holds the random time, whenever the condition holds, I mean whenever observation is given till that random point, the future I can think of as the time starting afresh, Markov chain is starting afresh from that state. Yeah. Yeah, this part is deterministic. This part is deterministic. There is no randomness involved in this case. That is the property of homogeneous Markov chain. So, what we do say it just does not depend on n, but how does it is uh, connecting here? This is with respect to a random time, right? And we are now talking about uh, you look into the distribution starting from that point. So, what did Markov property told you? Sorry, homogeneous. It said that P i j n is P i j for all n, right? And that is not this definition. You are going from step state i to state j from h step n is the same irrespective of which step you are looking at. So, here it is about if you have given me all the observations still time t, I can now think of my process uh, starting at that point into the future. Okay, this is a definition. So, this is what we are going to call it as strong Markov property. If my process at all satisfies this, my Markov chain, I am going to call it as a strong Markov property or a strong Markov chain. So, now let us see, is it true that any t, any random variable will for if I have a Markov chain, is it like if I take any random variable t which is integer valued, this property will be true? True. So, so let us look some examples. Okay, let us look at some, some examples of random times. Okay, t. 
Okay, let's uh, I let's take my Markov chain X n. Now let's fix a state J. Now I'm focused on one particular J. And now define T to be first. visit to j. You are going to just take one particular state and now you will be defining your t to be first visit to j. Your Markov chain is starting maybe at some point let us say it hits state j. Whenever it hits that time slot is given by this t. Okay. So, when it is going to hit g? that depends on your transition probability matrix and also on your initial distribution or maybe like an, uh, from which point you are going to start. So, T here is a random time. Now, I want to ask this question what is, what is, so T is now what is a map from omega to natural numbers. Now, I want to ask this question for some particular sample what is, uh, I want to ask this question what is this, uh, when this is going to happen, when this event is going to occur. No, T is simply a random number, it has nothing to do as of now with the Markov chain. Markov chain is there, now I am just defining T on this Markov chain as follows, T is the to be the time of first visit to J, right. Now, I want to ask, so maybe like let me make it index by J, so that uh, this J is more, more explicit. So, if this is the case, on some sample point, that my random variable takes value k, what does that mean? It must be the case that x of omega is not equals to j, x non is not equals to j all the way up to x k minus 1 of omega is not equals to j and then x k of omega is j. So, what does this mean? I am looking at this event, right? When I write, so Pella, this is not first state, zero state is not J, first state is not J, all the way, like even second is not J, even k minus one state is not J, but k state is J. So, this is the time, right? T is, is the time of first visit, time. T, I am, I am not talking about its distribution. I am just defining a random variable. Its distribution right now I am not worried about. So, is this random variable definition clear to you? This random variable is just telling it is focusing on a particular state and just uh, it is looking into it and seeing when I am going to first hit that state. If it is the first hit, it must be the case that previously I should not have hit that state, right? So, in the previous time indices. So, previous time indices k minus 1, k minus 2, all the way up to 1 and 0, these are not state j, they could be anything else, but on the kth state, it is going to be j. I am not selecting anything here, I am just defining what is the meaning of this. So, T j is a random variable, right? So, T j is what? T j is from omega to r, okay? Now, on a particular point omega, 
what is the meaning of tj omega value is k what does this mean so our definition is the first time it visits state j right the time of first visit okay so then in that case if this it has taken this tj has taken k value k on sample point omega this must have happened right only in the k round it would have hit j not before that yeah yeah if this is happened then that is exactly tj equals to k on that means yeah i mean this is uh, we don't need to write so this means yeah fine i mean this is the basically definition right definitions means they are both way okay implies okay yeah so can this so now let's see okay i can always define uh, some different different random variables like this which are a uh, random times right i could say instead of first visit to state j i could say tj is the time of second visit to j that means it is going to look it keeps on looking when first time happens okay and then looks okay when second time happens that time slot it is going to give it as value of tj like that i can define many many random times here but the question is is it true that for any random time this going this this property is going to be satisfied it so happens that not really it is the strong markov property is not necessarily need to be satisfied by any random times okay so for to see that let's look at an another example so i'm going to define uj to be yeah what hold this condition i don't know i mean i don't know because right now if this is if it holds then i'm going to call it as strong markov property if it holds whether it holds that's a different question when it holds or for what random times it holds i am just telling you that i'm giving examples of random times i'm not saying anything about whether this random time satisfies this property if it satisfies at all then we are going to call my markov change to be strong markov property with respect to that random time okay so this is just an example of a random time so now let's take another example where my random time is second visit to my state j okay and now uj now i'm going to define my random time to be just one step before this let's say it is going to hit second time my state j and the one step before is my random time i'll be interested in one 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 step just before it hits the second time the state j okay now let's see i want to compute this probability okay let's take some i and j and now let's try to understand what this probability is so what we are saying so t is what t is specific to particular state and we are saying that one step before so what is this t is giving you let's say 
you have this time slot. Let us say j has happened here and j has happened here okay, on this time slots and the t is basically giving you this time just one step before my second j. And now when I gave this right till time t I have given you and let us say so this t is going to always be this in this realization just one step before this right. And we have told that this time is this state is what i by this definition what is x t plus 1 is going to be j. So, if this k is not j what is this probability is going to be if and if k is equals to j this is going to be 1. Right? If k is equals to j by definition this state has to be j right. So, by with probability 1 and if k is not equals to j then it cannot happen this event cannot happen. So, then that is why it is going to be 0. So, this probability is 0 and 1, but is it going to be same as what we want according to this definition? So, so according to this definition we want it to be probability that x1 equals to k given x0 equals to i or basically this is same as saying p i k right that is my definition. But p i k can be anything instead of being 0 1 right. I can construct a Markov chain where this p i k can be anything, but if I am going to use such a random time what is happening is this probability is not equal to this probability. So, at least with this respect to this random time my strong Markov property whatever I am defining it here this is not satisfied. So, let us see what is making this strong Markov property failed in this example. Yeah. So, what is this? This random variable t j here in a way already anticipates what is going to happen in the next round right. So, t j is one step below my second visit. So, that means I already know the next step is going to be j. So, it is kind of anticipatory here. So, when such a thing is going to happen my strong workout property is not satisfying. So, we can anticipate in that case whenever my stopping time is such that it is not anticipatory in nature may be my strong Markov property is satisfied. Okay. So, you see that already any random time is not going to satisfy my strong Markov property. Okay, Let us take it. uj plus 1 and then so this is one step after j. So, you are already looking into the future in this case right like uh, so I mean this is a uh, not a good definition to apply here. So, suppose you have been told that my state is i after in the next state after I visited my state 2 for the second time. So, in that case it may be I do not know like this could be satisfying or not satisfying I do not know. But when it was like this it was clear that this should happen. When you have in this case, so when you have plus here yes you have been told that after visiting this here you have hit state 1 right. And then after this what is going to happen I do not know. 
that is the question you are asking here right yeah first j occurrence but where you have just taken immediately the next lot right so uj is what uj is exactly this where the you have hit j for a second time and then you are telling you tj to be immediately the next lot so either say either direct beach mein kuch nahi ho raha hai so then you have to see if you want to apply your definition what you have been told is at this point your state is i and now what you want to ask what is xt plus 1 is going to be k that i can't say anything right with this so that's why i can't i don't know what is happening here. but if you have defined like this the previous case it is not going to happen okay let's stop here then